seven o'clock. We already called the meeting to order at six. Um, and is there any public comment for items not on the agenda or additions or changes to the agenda? All right, hearing none. Um, Sandra, I put you on first. I think this should be pretty quick. Yep. Um, I was Join looking at the meeting. Eastmont Pillar Select Board was having this same discussion. Um, and I, I, you, I guess they're doing this audit, you think, to like every town in the state? Well, what it looks like to me is uh, the communication from the Vermont uh, Treasure, State Treasurer's Office indicated that uh, they have to be compliant with GASB auditing procedures. And this is an audit of the various entities in the municipal retirement system is, uh, is compliant with those accounting pr best practices. So that's why they're doing it. Well, and they had the census thing that you said you already completed, right? Right. So they, we do not have um, find many, very many financial policies and procedures. So in the absence of those in the to-do list, they asked for the census data questionnaire to be completed. Yeah. And if you have a chance to look at that, it's really quite simple in our case um yeah i did look at it 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 most of the answers were basically one words and, you know how often is payroll processed is one of the first questions well it's processed weekly who enters the payroll data sandra fervor who determines eligible compensation versus ineligible comp of compensation. How, what do you, how do you do Sandra refers to the personnel policy? Yeah, um, yeah. So a very, it's not complicated. It took me, I, I, you know, I'm not going to make it hard. It took me about 15 minutes. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, we use a, an accounting system, NIMRIC, which I am able to run reports and I was able to provide all of the quarterly reports that I rely upon and which are generated by that system. So if the board sees fit to sign the letter of engagement, at, which is at no cost to the town, I will um, ship everything out to them and we'll have completed that part of the, uh, that part of the, um, audit now remember also sullivan and powers audits us and they audit our beamers yearly anyway yeah so this is you know they're they're actually covering um old they would have done this with us anyway it should, it should be well, fairly i would think it would be fairly quick for them to do this well the the, the most significant questions uh, of this audit were, were there any status changes? And it just so happens in FY20, there were no retirements, no terminations, no changing from part-time to full-time and vice versa. So, it, you know, we just had a, a very stable workforce for yeah. that entire audited period. So this, this was very simple. Okay, so does anybody have any issue or questions about this audit that we don't have a choice in? <laughs> no, no. Okay, so um, would the board authorize me to sign this letter so we can get it out? Okay. And then I think it, I yeah. I would make that motion if it takes a motion. Sure. Yeah, we need a motion. Yeah. And Second. I would. I'll, I'll start. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Anything else on this select board that you want to ask Sandra or comment on? Wow. Karen Hosky joined the meeting. All right. So I think we're. I think we're done with this. Okay. All right. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you. Sandra, Have a good night. You want to take a vote? Oh, yeah. We got to take a vote. Oh, all right. Yep. All right. Let's go through the screen. Uh, Rick? 
Aye. Sharon? Aye. John? Yes. Cliff? Aye. Okay, and I'm an aye. All right, so now we can talk about um, horses and vehicles in Maple Corner and the consideration of an ordinance. Thank you, um, everyone. Good night. Good night, night Sandra. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Madam, Chair, Madam Chair, before we engage in this, I just want to make clear to folks that are attending tonight, um, I, I did allow Elizabeth's horses to be uh, boarded at our place. And uh, to the extent that I, I did that, it, it may create a perception of a conflict of interest. So I, I will not be making any decisions as a select board member. But if I participate tonight, it may be, I may participate tonight, but it would be as, as a common citizen. Okay, thank you for that. Yep. Now, I don't see, is, did you say Karen Haskey was on, Cliff? Yes, she is. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, by phone, yeah. okay, gotcha. Do you, May, Meg, I assume you're here for the same issue? Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good. Um, um, actually, I was here for the dam, I, okay, and I was just asking if that was 8.15. Is that accurate? Yes, right around there. It might be a little sooner. It might be a little later. Depends. Okay. But actually, I am curious on this. This is just a coincidence. Okay. So I'll stay here. Oh. Okay. Yeah, Denise, the uh, the horse item was actually, the roaming horses was scheduled to start at 7.10. Well, um, it's I, almost it's almost seven ten. So, no, I know. I was just scanning for whether there was like a ninety second item on our agenda, but I didn't find one. So no, and we're not. And last I knew, the board didn't want to take things out of order. So, well, maybe we can have people start introducing themselves, and we yeah. can climb up that way, and nothing of substance would be covered. Right. So, Karen, you're here for. The roaming horses vehicle. Do you know of anybody else that is going to join you on this dis for this discussion? I I actually don't. I was thinking Jamie was, but I haven't heard back from her. Yeah, I thought yeah. Jamie was too from the emails. Well, you guys can uh, hear me. Yeah, we yeah. can hear you. So in, well, okay. in, the mean, okay. in the meantime, Cliff, maybe you could call up the Williamstown ordinance because sometimes it takes a minute to get a document called up. So that'll buy us some. So did, did you confirm, Denise, whether, did you get confirmation whether that's been formally adopted? No, I didn't. I'm going to have to follow up. I did ask the Williamstown ACO, you know, sort of what prompted them to do this. And I couldn't find on their website where there was a signed ordinance. And that's, so that's why I reached out to see if they had signed it. And if they didn't, why didn't they? So I'm going to have to do another follow-up with them. So this is their, um, it's actually, it's, it's actually, a, I think, pretty well done, this ordinance. Yeah. Um, you know, and then there's the process for adoption, which I sent around to everybody um, that we've all been through, you know, before there's, it becomes effective so many days after the select board adopts it. Um, and I'm not, I'm, I'm not knowing for sure tonight whether Tonight, I wanted to see if the board wanted to go forward with an ordinance, and then we could put it on the next agenda. Um, we would want our town attorney to review a draft ordinance and then put it on the next agenda um, to review and then perhaps adopt. And then there's a 45 day waiting period before it becomes final. And during that, uh, during that window, another group of residents could petition to not have the ordinance. I don't see that happening, but it's, we still have to follow the, gu the guidelines. Well, we would start, no, we wouldn't adopt this ordinance to serve without a discussion. We'd want to go through it, right? Right, right. right. Um, so that's what I'm, I'm kind of looking for. There was talk, some talk about leashing your dog when you're walking the dog, unless I misunderstood it. I, we've had that conversation before. Right, we have a, well, we have a dog ordinance already, a dog yeah. and wolf hybrid yeah. ordinance. This mentions that dogs yeah they must have done it all in one or something yeah on a lead rope or leash 
But that doesn't say, it just says running at large means that an animal, it doesn't say dog. Oh, oh okay. okay. But the document refers to domestic animals. Right. Yeah. So, so we kind of talked a little bit about this um, coming at it from a different angle uh, two meetings ago, was it? Or maybe a little longer, not that long ago though. Um, my thought would be on something of this, of this magnitude that we, I mean, uh, to me, it's obvious that we need to move forward on, you know, taking a careful look at this ordinance and consider how, how we might adapt it, if at all, to, to meet our needs. And I would want to do that in partnership with, you know, some of the um, folks in town who have been the concerned citizens. Yeah, the concerns, yeah. the concern. I mean, it, it would be great to, to have their expertise really on what does this look like? How do we finalize it? Um, the select, having somebody from the select board to say, well, we already have a dog ordinance and so we need to take it out so it doesn't, you know, create any conflict. Um, and then, yeah, meet with, meet with Jim and understand um, you know, anything we might, we might need to, but I think, wasn't there something at the top, um, did they cite a, an authority or did I make this up that Williamstown is doing this under the authority to do a nuisance statute? Yeah, it's a nuisance statute. <clears throat> right. So, so that, you know, that may, Jim may have some, you know, helpful, colorful, you know, experience <coughs> to, to add but as long as there's statutory authority um and there is statutory authority for a new nuisance ordinance then really we just we have to develop something that's going to work for us address the concerns that we're hearing um and start a process well it sounds to me like domestic animals are defined by statute and there's this whole list of the domestic animals there and it doesn't mm -hmm. include dogs Right, or cats. we have a, we right. have a separate we have a separate dog wolf hybrid ordinance. So okay, yep, you're right. right. Yeah. So this is clearly just other domestic animals. It's right. great that it won't include my pet rattlesnakes. Um, <laughs> does it talk about snakes? I don't know. It doesn't. So that's great. There you go. That's the next ordinance, the reptile one. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd like to um. I don't know if there's anybody, I mean, we kind of all know what's been going on, so I don't think we need to right, right. to rehear yeah, everything. Rehash, we, we all right. know what's going on. We don't have to rehash everything. We just need to right. come up with a solution. Karen, well, I just have two. Okay. Go ahead. I'm I want to hang on, Karen. I want to see if the board has any other comment, and then I'll open it up to other folks. My only comment is to hear Karen's reaction to. And, and her insight from her on whether there's folks that, that we could pull from to, to make a small work group with, with one person from yes. the, with one person from the board working with that group. Yes, totally. I mean, you'll give me a number and I'll pull it together. Okay, so like a um, number of how many you're looking for. Well, let's see if anybody else on the board has another comment. Okay, Cliff, Rick. John? No, I really like that idea. They're, they're, they've been front and center and, you know, we've all had this happen to us at different times, but it, uh, it, this has been an extreme case. So I think they yeah. bring. Well, and I, I also want, I also want to include in the group that's working on this, our um, animal control officer and our assistant animal control officer. So it may, it may be, I mean, I'm, willing to work with the group on on this and call in yeah john well i think it would be good uh to include folks in the group uh or a representative or two in the group that has not had an affected interest in this otherwise it's going to look like we're uh, <coughs> yeah running so um i think if there could be folks who haven't had a direct impact from the current situation that might be helpful toward making sure we 
or Do you have anybody in mind? As objective as possible. Uh, I don't. I don't know. I miss. It just came to mind. You know. Yeah, we could try to find somebody who you're talking about. Somebody maybe that lives <laughs> in another in another part of the town. It, it could be someone in the same part of town, but they haven't had horses run through the yard, or they weren't the constable, yep. or they were on the select board, or you know, they weren't. It may actually be good to have somebody who actually does have horses or other animals too. That I mean, that's a great. They may be able to help us there because that yeah. that they are going to be aware of the challenges as well. Yeah. Like maybe Charlotte Ruth, maybe Ruth or Porter or somebody like that. She's yeah, yeah. She yeah. knows yeah. Twitter. Yeah, we could ask. Yeah, we could ask Ruth for sure. Yeah, that'd be a great person. Or Charlotte, Anna, Hannah. Yeah, Hannah, yeah. Hannah. yeah. Either either one either one of them. We could put it in the minutes to try to get one of them to help us look at this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay. And Karen, you kind of were, it's kind of was your turn. Anything else, Karen? Well, yeah, I had two things I wanted to say. Um, okay. Just, and I want to say that I'm not going to rehash everything because I know you guys know it all. But in one of the emails, I just want to reiterate what Nick Ward said, is that while he was talking to a lawyer about a civil suit, the lawyer said the, there's a better favorable possibility of an outcome when the town has an ordinance in place. Yeah. So that is going to help us move forward if we need to in another in, in another direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Make so I want to make sure that Yep. Yeah. Okay. And, you and then just points. Yep. Just wanted to reiterate, you know, Janet Ansel sent in something for us and one of the things she said was enforcement will always be a challenge, but first the town needs something to enforce. Yeah. And then she had given you a suggestion of language that may talk about each day's violation being a separate violation, meaning it would increase the penalty or mm -hmm. give us more teeth in the in the ordinance. Yep. And that yeah, we should keep that. In, yeah, we should keep that in mind while we're working on it. Katie, do you have that in the minutes? Okay, perfect. Right, Meg, you had your hand up. Um, I was wondering if, um, when you were mentioning expertise, does it have to be someone in the town or can it be somebody out of town, like in East Montpelier? I don't know why we would want somebody from out of town. I just mean because there, there are other is... people with horse, you know, knowledge and rescue. Right. But this the is going to be in, this is the ordinance would only be for Callis. So, yeah, I know it's just for input, just for research. Um, all I'm trying to say is that Carolyn Hertz from our group spent a lot of time emailing different people and, and trying to understand the options. And there are many people that were horse boarders and I don't know, mm -hmm. it just might be interesting to go to other communities other as well, well, just that live nearby that might have some useful information. That's all. Well, I think as the, I think the the working group could probably make that decision on you know who else to involve. Right. Yeah. I mean, I I I love that folks that have been reaching out. I wouldn't imagine bringing someone actually onto a work group, but Carolyn, who's been talking to lots of people in other places, maybe she's a good ad for the work group. Yeah. Let's just you know. Um... Should we also in this, I mean, there are kind of two categories here and we have, I mean, one of them and it's mentioned is safety, but you know, the large animals say in roads are real hazards. And so mm -hmm. would that be almost, a, you know, a second discussion in this as well. And, you know, it should it have its own imperative. I'm so, having trouble hearing you, Rick. Uh, I was just thinking, you know, one, it mentioned safety, you, you know, early in this, mm -hmm. this uh, Williamstown ordinance, but we roadway safety is a real issue with large animals, you know. So, do we want to speak even more to that as well? Both are very important, but I think we should we we I think we would want to, you know, really be very clear with the you know with with the safety element on that. And we should be, mm -hmm. maybe that should be pretty, you know, there's, there should be some pretty serious, you know, we, this is something we want to prevent. So, cause that we could easily have fatalities with the, 
Yeah. You know, yeah. an impact with something like a horse or a, you know, it's a large now, animal. Yeah. Yeah. No, I've, that's been one of my greatest concerns is somebody hitting the a horse oh, and, yeah. you know, who knows, God forbid, what could happen. So, yeah. Well, we'll work on a draft and we can and bring it back to the board. Um, and I see that Wilson and Janet have joined us. So Wilson and Janet were just talking about, hi, Janet, hi, Wilson. Hi. Talking about the ordinance and we're putting together a working group. Um, and Good. we've noted your suggestion in our minutes so that we can incorporate that into a draft. Um, Wilson, um, we decided we don't need to rehash all the events leading up to this because everybody's pretty aware of them, anybody that's here. Um, did you have anything specific we would like to have you and our other um, animal control person involved in reviewing a draft? I don't have anything to add at this point. I just sent you a report from Friday. Oh, okay, great. Janet, did you have any input? Um, no, no, and I'm sorry that I was late joining you, but I had trouble getting the link. <laughs> link uh -huh. to it. But, um, but I, I did, I, I did want to say that I, I think the select board's on the right path. I, I think doing an ordinance as tough as it is, is really, is really what you, where the town needs to go. This is, I mean, the problem is. Um, as we all know, fairly serious. Um, and yeah. um, there, you know, without an ordinance, there's there's nothing nothing to enforce. So, um, so I, I I think you're I think you're headed in the right direction. Um, you know, just to recap really briefly on the legislation, I introduced it in 2020, a little over a year ago at the town's request. It passed the House, but it didn't pass the Senate. It may have gotten <coughs> up in the pandemic, I, I really can't say, but um, it, I didn't hear from the town um, to reintroduce it. Um, sort of felt that if it got reintroduced, reintroduced, it probably should start in the Senate because that's where the holdup was. Um, but the, the truth is that even if it had passed, it still would have required the town to adopt an ordinance. So frankly, yeah. I think the town's better off where you are right now um, and okay. not wait for anything to happen at the yeah, state. I know when I, when I talked to the sheriff's office and I sent out an email to everybody about it, they said, you know, if we had an ordinance, it would make them, their ability to help us would be better. Oh, absolutely. And, wow. and, you know, for Wilson, he has something to show when he mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, gets called. So I think it, it, it clearly would make a difference. Yeah. Enforcement's hard, but um, it is. you have to start somewhere. It's unfortunate um, that we're, we're backed into the corner where, he, you know, with, it, with in the, some individuals just cross the line of responsibility and then it it, I mean, obviously, it's hard to keep animals all the time. We all know that we, you know, it's, and and that it complicates life for a lot of people who are otherwise kind of innocent victims. I feel bad about that. But mm -hmm. It's definitely. I don't this think is, we have a choice. This, you know, we go. Yeah, I think this is more the habitual offender. Yeah, yeah. Who is who is J L H? Can I? <clears throat> Julia Haynes, two thirty seven Collar Hill Road. Oh, okay. Hi, Julia. Did you have any comment you would like to make? Well, I would just really like to see the animals in a safe place where they're well cared for and, and not destroying my property. I mean, if my dog goes on somebody's property and bites them, kicks them, destroys property, I'm liable for that. I will have to be told to put my animal down or somebody will shoot it. And that's within acceptable boundaries. But mm -hmm. we can't do anything about these horses. I just I think it's unfathomable. Well, I don't know if you missed the discussion. We're going to put a group together to work on an ordinance. Okay, great. Yep. Yeah, no, we were late. My daughter had a softball game. Oh, that's a perfect night for a softball game. Yeah. Right. Okay, so it sounds like we have a plan. Um, and the vehicle issue in the town right of way, um, the sheriff's department or the state trooper has the authority to call and have the vehicle towed so if the town has it towed 
then it becomes an expense the town has to pay. If the sheriff or the state trooper has it towed, then it ends up in their lot or whatever they call it, and it stays there until she can have it gets the money to um, get it out of hawk or or if it stays there too long, then they get rid of them. Wilson, did you have something on that? Yeah, I went by her house today and the van is back. It's back, it's not parked in the road. She moved it off the road, but the front end of the van is clearly in the right of way. And it's got a couple of uh, red traffic cones, ah. marking, you know, but it's in the road again. Um, she won't respond to knocking on the door. Well, in the well, then we get the sheriff back out. I called the sheriff. Did you? I called him. Yeah, I did. I called right. him and said that it's it's there and it's in the right of way. It needs to be towed. We'll see where he takes it. Uh, so yeah. to be to be clear, I think Wilson, you mean the tra It's projecting out into the travel portion of the right of way. Yes, the right of way actually extends onto the shoulders, and you yeah. can park on the shoulders. <laughs> yeah, Sean. Do you remember where she had wood stacked in the road? <laughs> yes. Did she have her okay, wood in the road too? Moved. I don't remember that. It wasn't stacked she though. Moved. <laughs> now the van is right on the shoulder. It's right, it's nose into the road. Right, hmm. the travel way of the road. It is in the travel way. Alfred Larry. Yeah, so that's what's important to- Join the meeting. Yeah. I, I just, before we leave this topic, which I suspect we will be really um, soon. I, so Denise, I want to just crystallize what, what I'm hearing. We're there, there will be, I guess, convened officially outside of this meeting, a small work group of, uh, we don't have to decide the size here because it's really, you know, that's, it's, I think it, it small enough to be manageable and, and large enough for people to have the input they want to have, obviously. Yep. Denise, is, Denise is going to be the, the sole point person for the select board. So along with that, I want to say a couple of things as a select board member. One, Denise, I, I, um, I think we should authorize Denise to reach out and have whatever conversations with Jim on our behalf that she needs to. And then secondly, I don't, I don't feel the need to be included on all of the communication. There will be a lot. Um, mm -hmm. So I would actually really appreciate, I appreciate Denise being our representative in this work group. And then I would, I would really appreciate it um, not, not to be included on all of the email because then I, the, um, not having all the email will let me know, you know, Denise will send it, to, send us emails that we really need to see when things are starting to gel and, and that'll allow for my part, it feel it would make me feel like I know where, where I need to really focus when there's communication yeah. coming forward. Yeah. And I, I'm almost always do all of my communication with oh. Jim. I like to have the, have it in email so that I can refer back to it later or forward it on to a board member who might have other additional questions that I didn't think of if need be. And that's fine. I just, I don't, I, yeah. that's, that's important to you. That's not important to me. And when I'm being authorized to do something, I want to be able to have a phone call and crystallize it in my mind and prepare it for the rest of the board. So you do what you need to do. And what I'm at, what I'm saying is you do what you need to do because you're our point person on this project. So, um, any, what I'll, I'll do is I have the emails of all the people that have sent um, raise concerns about this. So I'll come up with a date, a couple of dates that I'm available to meet and we can do it on Zoom and see who might, maybe we can make it into a, everybody has a chance to speak, but then we put it into a working group so that we can get something done quickly. Sure. Okay, sounds good. Denise, okay, Denise, so I'll Denise, be in touch. Be, I, I you can't hear you, Rick. Denise, if I you can't. want me to be involved, I'm glad to be. I will call so, on, yeah, I'll call on people as I think if I need help. Okay. Katie? I heard um, Sharon know that um, she'd like the board to authorize the chair to reach out. Is that an informal thing or should I be asking about a motion? I don't think we need a motion. No, I do think it's in the minutes. 
It, yeah, as long as it's in the minutes. Got yeah. it. Yeah. Okay, so thank you, everyone. I'll be in touch, um, and we'll get All this right. get this rolling. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Well, thanks a lot, guys. Thanks, right. Yeah. Thank Bye -bye. you. Thank you for participating. Bye. Yeah. We really appreciate it. All right. Um, is it Alfred? I think. I, oh, there's Alfred. Yeah, I'm here on phone. I my computer is updating. Oh, how nice of it, right? <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Well, I shut it. I shut it off to bring it home, and when I turn it on, it's updating. Okay. So, yeah, we've um, all had that happen. Um. Yeah. So I have one question first before we. Um, do anything else? I you were going to put something on front porch forum about the mowing position, and I haven't seen anything yet. Right. Yeah, I haven't got to that. I guess. Okay. So this is a reminder. Okay. All right. Um, Cliff, do we have the curb cut application in there? I can. I don't see it in the folder. It might have been in, might be in the folder from last week. Okay. But Alfred, while Cliff was looking, you've been out there to, re to view this? Uh, yes, I have. Okay, and um, I know Stephanie's here. She lives on Jack Hill. What can you tell us about the curb cut he says it's for um it's residential but it's a shed there are three curb cuts in the previous folder denise okay so this is the victor and tracy sherbrooke okay got it thank you so yes he's got it as residential and it's to access a shed but yeah he's still accessing our town road, so we have to treat it the same. Yep. <clears throat> okay. So I, I looked at it, I measured site distance. Um, it's a little bit under the site distance on the, if you're sitting at the driveway and you're looking towards North Callis, mm -hmm. and it's because of that little hill, there's a little knob hill um, but it's, he, go ahead. If he moved it a little bit, would it be better? Can he move it? Well, because of the lay of the land, I don't think he can move it because, you know, then his driveway would be right straight mm -hmm. up a hill. Mm -hmm. Um, so it'd be difficult to change it. Um, I mean, he's so close. It was like 260 feet that I felt comfortable with. And we only required 300 feet. So I, I mean, I think that it's, I think it's okay. Uh, okay. He definitely needs, definitely needs a culvert. 15 inch. Um, uh, 15 inch, yeah. And there's not, there's not a ditch there now, but once he puts a driveway in, there will have to be. And who, who, um, who's responsible for making the ditch then? Uh, no, usually use their contractor will make the ditch a short ways away from their culvert and then we'll pick up from there. Okay. So we want the contractor to install a, install a ditch. Do we know, do you know how many feet on either side of the culvert? Um, we could say 10 feet is fair. I mean, they just, just to catch the water until we can get there. I mean, it's, it's working fine now without the, without the driveway, but if you put a driveway in, mm -hmm. it's going to, it's going to create problems. So, um, we'll just put a ditch in after he gets his work done. Alfred, can we, when you, when, before we move past or when your guys are done with Culver, I want to go back to the line of sight and make sure I understand what you said. Yeah, go ahead, Chair. So, so I was just going to pull up the policy and I didn't get that done, but Alfred, are you saying that the line of sight does not meet 
our curb cut policy and whatever the state standard is that we've incorporated into it. Right. It's it's 40 feet short. I mean, it's it's really hard to, to judge because it's sort of a, a knoll and kind of standing mm -hmm. in the location of where he's got his dry, his curb cut marked out. I kind of look back and, and, and then I measure it. You know, I pick a, like a tree or something when I could see, and then I, then I measure to it. And our standard says 300 feet and he in the site distance is about 260. So it's really close. And I believe that's a 35 mile an hour road. Well, that's, yeah, so so what I'm looking for is if we're going to deviate from what is the town's policy, um, and as, if I'm remembering you right, when I dug in deeper and looked at this a while ago, we are directly incorporating a state standard into our policy. So right, if, we're, if we are going to deviate, then what is the stand, the objective standard, you know what I'm saying? So it must meet this standard, but if it doesn't meet this standard, the, you know, the two times that we might approve if it doesn't meet the standard are this and this. Because I, I don't want us to be vulnerable to, um, you know, we do it when we feel like it. No, I think, I think we don't normally right. deviate from the standard. That's so right. I have, I mean, <laughs> even though I was asking all the questions, my concern still remains the site distance. Um, right. Well, this, if I, this, I mean, if I could look at it again, I did it by myself. So I just parked the truck and then I looked and then I measured it. If yeah. I had two people, I could probably get a, a more accurate measurement. And also if they were to cut some brush, that would help also. Um, so we might be within the standard. It's just that, you know, when I measured it, I, I could only comfortably come up with 260 feet. I, love I think, that. I think we're not ready to approve this then tonight. I Did love you, uh, this. Alfred's going to go yeah. back. Yeah. We won't approve it until you, yeah. Cut some brush, get a second yeah. sure. measuring. Is he, are they around? Did you meet with them, Alfred? I did not, no, I just I just got the application and I went and looked at it so that I would be prepared for, to discuss it with you, with, this, with the board. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think- They're, I they're think from Lind Lindenville. They live in so. Lindenville. So if they want their curb cut, they should make a time, they should make an effort to come up and meet with, with you on site so that, um, yeah, I mean, I find I find that that works a lot better, and you know, a lot of the the more recent, newer curb cut applications, they're calling okay. me first, and yeah. so we can go look at it and work out some of these details before we get to the board. Yeah, that's what we want. So I can. There's a phone number on this application. I can give them a call and and set up a time for them to come and have a look. Yeah, that would be great. Have... Stephanie, Stephanie wants to say something before we're done with this. Um, but no, I don't. I'm I'm not willing to approve this curb cut at the, until we look at it again. I, I have a, I do have a couple of questions too. Oh, when she's okay. done. Well, I like to let the board go first, so go ahead, Rick. Uh, one of them being, you know, what's what's the frequency of use on this? The they do deviate from this sometimes at the state level. One being if there isn't an alternative, and it doesn't sound like there is. And number two is, you know, what's that frequency of use? If it's a woodshed, very, very occasional, your risk is low, as long as that's clear that it's not a, you know, and then the number two, there would be that vertical alignment. Usually that's taken from a distance of like, I think it's four feet off the ground to the brow of that hill. So if it's basically from a driver's eye, so, and I think you you already know that, Valfred, I'm sure, but right. So it's, it's well, my and yeah, and part of my concern is right now they might say that they're not going to use it that often because it's mm -hmm. a shed. But then later on, if they build yeah, a oh, residence, yeah. then it would get used a lot, a lot more. I think that has to be clear in the permit that it's it's more like a at that point it's more like a farm drive, farm access. And not that's, that's you know, not a residential. For, Rick. Rick. What? Hey, what, John? This is curb cut. We either 
determine access and egress from that point is mm -hmm. safe or it is not. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and we should anticipate that it's going to be a house there. That's what it should be anticipated. Well, right. he does say resident. He says it, residential. Yeah, okay. That's, and and it know. says development. I mean, you put your shed in, you do your clearing, you lock up your chainsaws, and you put the foundation in. That's how it works in Vermont. All right. So I'll I'll reach out to these guys and, and wait a minute. Uh, I want to I want to let I want to let Stephanie meeting. ask I want to let Stephanie ask her question. I want to make a comment. Oh, comment. I'm make okay. a comment about it. Yep. Um, Shackle Road is used by a lot of pedestrians and bicyclists, including a uh, recumbent tricycle that's used by my husband, and it's low. And um, I just want to make sure that the site distance is at least what the standard is, because we don't want any accidents there. And, and people are not always looking out for low recumbents, even though it's got a flag on it. Um, I just ah. want to point out that that's what this, this road is heavily used by bicyclists, including a very low um, tricycle. And it's used okay. frequently. And so the, uh, the minimum sight distance is absolutely a minimum. Well, I minimum hope. sight distance is based on the speed limit of the road. So if the bicyclists are going, say, 35 miles an hour, I mean, which I don't is think probably so. healthy, sight distance can be a lot shorter. You know, that's, but you're right. I mean, if it's low, that's your basic sight line. The sight line issue, that's a little different. You know, you want to make sure that there's good visibility on the road. Yeah, I hear, I follow you. Yeah. Okay, so we know we're not improving it tonight. Um, and Alfred, I'm going to put it on you to get back to me to let me know if it's right for June 14th. Okay. Okay. I accept that responsibility. Thank you. All right. Um, Rick, John, Alfred, a quick two minute update on the Western Star. I know Rick sent an email, but I want to put it on the, I want it in the minutes of what was decided and so forth. So Rick, did you want to kind of recap your- Yeah, I think we, sure, we could do that. I, we, we thought the deal, we thought that was, uh, we authorized uh, Alfred to go ahead and, you know, sign that agreement. We thought that was a very fair price. It limited the mileage that could additionally be put on the truck based on their typical mileage over that period of time I would be before we took uh i think it was eighty four thousand miles i believe but john looked at the undercarriage on it and he and alfred they said it looked really good um you know so uh and the price was certainly fair on it uh we so that uh yeah basically we authorized him to move forward on that the question okay. the bigger question for us you know will be well what haven't opened the discussion that's intended as a replacement for that for a backup truck because our our spare is so old it's getting very expensive to maintain. So right. if we if we are going to be increasing our our or decreasing our rodeo times by increasing our frontline truck presence by one, mm -hmm. you know, we wanna we may need to be buying a another truck at some point. So that right, because we have that, a fit well, we have a fifth person that that's right. The position is approved effective July 1st. So. so we don't really want to be using a spare truck, a high mileage spare truck as a frontline truck, because you're probably talking at least two to three times the mileage per year and wear and tear on that. So mm -hmm. this is a, you know, so that if we are intending to have that fifth person plowing to reduce rodeo time, then we'll, we'll look at that. I'm, as, as you know, I'm calculating, I'm working on calculating kind of the overtime rates and things like that on mm -hmm. it'll look like budget wise for us with a first person a fifth person but uh yeah anyway okay, john that, john did you have anything you wanted to say about the truck no no rick covered it well um just that i want to underscore that while the uh chassis the frame of the truck is in really good shape um that should get repainted um or at very least have uh, a good undercoating put on it. And the the dump body definitely needs sandblasting, priming, painting, 
and undercoating. Uh, we're not, it's not going to last long. It's really starting to show. Yeah, I think uh, that's in the minutes from. Yeah, no, it is. Night. It is. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So I think we're. Yeah. Alfred said he'd get on that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for. So that, when Alfred. when are we looking for this to be delivered or ready to pick up or whatever? December. December. Okay. All right. Um. All right. I guess that takes care of the road commissioners portion of the meeting. Well, well, I just want to just. Well, I've oh, got a I couple of note. things. Hold on, Alfred. Just want to note before I forget. Uh, the chervil is in bloom, so the, that mower needs to be out now. Okay. Um, Alfred, well, you, you had right, a couple. Right on schedule. You said you had a couple other things, but you didn't send me an email about putting stuff on the agenda. Well, it's something that that's fairly brand new, and I just want to make the board aware of it. It's not something you need to make a decision on. It's just you need to okay. be aware. Okay. Um, there's a landowner on Lightning Ridge Road that has got a lot of big stones and telephone poles in our right-of-way. And I know in the past that when that has happened, we have asked the landowner to move them out of the right-of-way. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's just creating a dangerous situation, and I'm, I think the board wants to be aware of it. Okay. Okay. Let us know if we need to take some kind of action on that. Um, okay. Well, um, I, I'm hoping everybody knows who I'm talking about without saying his name, but yeah, uh, I think we got a good it, idea. It's it's brewing, and it's and it's just not it's not a safe thing. I mean, particularly in the winter time when those stones freeze down and I mean, they're big stones there. Some of them are five, six feet, uh, mm -hmm. diameter. So if a car leaves the road and hits them, it's the town's responsibility or mm -hmm. reliability yeah. because it's in the right of way. Are, are so the if you guys are out passing by, just have a look. It's on lightning Ridge road. You yeah. won't miss them. Okay. Well, so what I'm hearing now is that is is not just a suggestion, but an affirmative request that we ask said landowner to move. Right. I mean, is that what we're hearing? I don't know. Alfred started out by saying um, there was no no action for us to take. So I'm assuming. Well, yeah. Than, I mean, I'm just making you guys aware. You guys yeah. can decide what you want to do to protect the town's interests. Yeah. Um, well, I guess because maybe I know I know that it's a hazard, and I want to make you guys aware so that um, I'm not, you know, looked at as just dropping the ball because it's yeah. definitely yeah. a hazard. So let me ask um, the board this: Rick or John? Would you be willing to go and look and document it? Maybe take some pictures. Uh, I'm, sure. I'm, I'm I'm gonna, definitely. I'd like clarification. In, you know, in Alfred's opinion, it, I understand in the winter it's a problem. Is, do you see it as a hazard all all around the year, Alfred? Like right now? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just almost clear. in the travel portion. A couple of oh. them are like oh. a, fi a foot or so from the travel portion of the road. Since the concern is the clear car, if, yeah, if a car yeah. varied from the road and hit it, it would be uh, That's right. not could be, good. Yeah, it's, okay. yeah, it could be a problem. Yep. yep. Those are clear zone rules. Those are in statute. So, yeah, you have right of way, and then you've got clear zone. So mm -hmm. clear zone is a function of speed on a road, how many feet off. So yeah, that if it's within a foot or something like that, it's in the clear zone. We we have an ordinance for putting things in the right of way. Yeah, we do. It's in stone walls, anything like that, mm -hmm. it needs a permit. So. So yeah. can we? So Rick or John or both? You know, I, want to take a look. Yeah. I I can't be responsive this week because I'm I'm booked. I can't. Yeah, get well, we wouldn't be doing so anything. Maybe, of Rick, if you're willing to do it, that'd be great. Otherwise, I'd, next I'll week. gladly do it. Give me, just tell me where it is on Lightning Ridge. Give me a rough uh, idea. I'll Bye send now. you a message, Rick. 
on the uh, message board here. Yeah, that's fine. That'll, or yeah, just drop me, drop me an email. I'm and sending we, you a message right now in the chat section, Rick. Okay, okay. now if we, if we need to take some sort of action by the board, then I need you to let me know about putting it on the agenda for the 14th. And then I think Sharon wanted to say something else. Yeah, I want to go back to the chervil. So the chervil is in bloom. And did I hear a minute ago that we haven't hired or even posted for a mower? Did I understand your, did I, is that right? Or did I? I we yeah. haven't, we haven't posted and we, we have guys that can run it. We have four guys that can run it. So the tractor can, can be operating. Okay. Okay. I mean that, yeah, my gosh, we've been talking about this every year since I've been on the board. So. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, it's, it's a, first of all, it's a hard position to fill. Okay. Hey, um, you know what we I mean? Need to, we need to move, move along yep. here. All right. I'm done. I'm uh, done. It's a perfect retiree position, man. Yes. I, I tell you, if I were retired right around the tractor with the radio going and the air conditioning, nothing better, man. Yeah, there you go. That's the life. Yep. All right. So um, moving on, um, I put Peter Harvey's request for no mowing signs back on, and I sent him the blurb from the minutes that talked about him presenting um, to the board that he's talked to the neighbors. That was the condition in the minutes. Um, that he's talked to the neighbors, and I think we were looking for Peter to report back to the board with documentation. The property owners on those roads have been in communication and agreement about continuing the experiment. And I think Rick, you were gonna, you were going out to meet. You and Peter were going yeah. out to to walk. So do you want to give us an update of your little site visit? Sure. I mean, I mean Peter and I met uh, in the. the the two I, I'll be, I gotta where, step away for a second. I'll be right back. Okay. The two, the two places where I thought there might be some, uh, some impacts on site distance, you know, we're basically at the two triangles, the triangle intersections and Peter and I walked those and he offered to hand side those every month or the, you know, the spot that, where we thought that would be an issue. And then we would, uh, uh, and I would, I'm willing to go out and verify it, you know, so that that's done, you know, so, it, so that, that really was for me, my only concern was with the sight line for intersections at roads, you know, where people couldn't see uh, as they pull up to an intersection. We also, there was, we also need, if, if, if the select board agrees to this, to have him just hand sides at the the intersections every month, we'll have to have Alfred come in and just clear some. Uh, some it's a very small amount of like of uh, saplings that are in the just in the ditch lines. So it, it I mean it should only be a few minutes worth of work. It's they're small, but uh, Peter was hesitant to do that in the town right of way and on somebody else's property, but uh, so. But Peter can talk in detail to what that is. So he's about to speak as well, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Um, just for the minutes, uh, my name says Lucy Walliger, my wife's name on there, and it's Peter mm -hmm. Harvey speaking. And that's because I this is a borrowed computer from a third party. You look um, like a Lucy to me. <laughs> So uh, uh, yeah, and there are also some branches uh, that are in the uh, yeah. in the right of <laughs> in the right of way that uh, block vision uh, on that uh, triangle. Um, but mm -hmm. uh, yeah, if I side it, then we won't be bringing in any seeds, and it's really a, a very easy thing to do. Um, it's just down on my corner, and uh, and I can just walk around it with a side in half an hour, once a month, and uh, which will be twice as often or three times as often as the road crew will be able to uh, go in with a brush hog. So I'd, I'd like to do that. Okay, uh, my, my concern is that the minute stated 
that we wanted documentation that the property owners have okay. all been. I, I, um, I've got, uh, I've contacted um, out of 30, uh, seven, 36 households, including my own. I've contacted um, 27 said yes, no have said no, two have said no, and five I have yet to receive answers from. Uh, and I just got two more answers this afternoon uh, about five mm -hmm. o'clock. So I can email this to you. Um, I can email it now or right after we get done talking, if you'd like, with the names the of the people, here. the addresses, their phone numbers, their emails, and their answer. I guess uh, John, asked, I John, asked, John asked who the two no's were. Uh, oh, the two no's are uh, Steri Lino and um, uh, Kent Morris. And they were, they've were they been no's right along. Uh, we had one no change to a yes. Uh, and two people, uh, and one of those being the one who changed to a yes, um, said that they really uh, liked the road, uh, roadside being mowed last uh, fall when uh, the road crew did it last after they power washed uh, the equipment. And, uh, and so that's their, uh, their yeses were based on that. Okay, so, the, let me uh, ask, so let me ask the board a question then. Mm -hmm. um, we asked for specific documentation and Peter has it, but hasn't sent it to us yet. How do you feel about proceeding with making a decision tonight i could send it all to you in five minutes or let me no let me let me hear from the board well, well so for clarification purposes with the no's those are going to get mowed you know for better or worse kent and Sotherio's road frontage right they would get mowed um you mean you come in and spot mow those two places yeah well uh they I think a no means we want ours mode. And so mm -hmm. I, I think that's, we have to, <clears throat> otherwise what's the purpose of the survey? Um, okay, Steri Lino doesn't have, it's all parking, parallel parking. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> but across and, the road, he owns land across the road along the pond. Yeah. So that would get mode. So Alpha, so other select board members? I would, tend, I, I would tend to agree with Sean on that if it if the property owner doesn't as much as I don't like to do that I think that we you know we would have to spot mode that place probably and I know that defeats the purpose a little bit but well actually it adds to the study because then it would show that if wild turtle was being brought in by the mower very it would true. add wild gerbil to that area, uh, you know, where it hasn't uh, hasn't got well. Steri's side on the pond hasn't got any right now. It's all uh, it's all uh, something else. So, uh, Peter, Peter, um, yeah. uh, educate me again or re-educate me. Um, what the, your re, your your review of the gerbil, um, how the gerbil spreads. Is it also it beyond seed? We're cutting it early before it goes to seed. Does it still spread by little pieces like knotweed or is that, is that not an issue? No, that's as far as I understand, that's not an issue at all. Okay, Because we're going to uh, hopefully stay uh, ahead of the seed. seed right? So we, it, well, it may not help you on your study. <laughs> it's, it's going to be going to seed steadily uh, from about two weeks from now through into August. Um, remember, I brought uh, two years ago. I brought plants in in August yep. that we're going to seed to show you that after it had been mowed, um, and uh, that was up from Lightning Ridge Road. So yep. it is going to continue to go. Mowing it twice isn't going to prevent the seeds. It's going to slow it down a bit. But it's, it's the plants that you mow off are going to grow up again and try to go to seed again. Yeah. So it and I and you and I understand that you can't mow um, every, you know, what is it, uh, 170 or 80 miles of roadside every week in town like you can do the triangle. 
but um, the triangle's already got a dozen plants that are foot high yep. and going to flower again. So your yep. triangle. Yep. Uh, it's, it's something that the roadside, we won't be able to, to, uh, to prevent it from, from being on the roadside. I'm hoping that uh, my, my end goal is to get people to manage their own roadsides and not have it keep on coming in uh, a lot. And, uh, and then to That's get the great. farmers, the several farmers in town we've got uh, to uh, keep it out of their fields. Okay, so it's, eight, so it's it's eight o'clock. Um, I'm looking for the select board to see if you're ready to make a decision tonight. Um, I appreciate Peter's input that it actually helps his study. Um, I'm wondering if anybody can remember what's our approach been other years. I know we've asked Peter to seek input or approval from his neighbors in other years. Um, and I, I think I'm a little surprised that no means they, that you get your, your, you know, your property mode. I would have, I, if I had been asked to say, what does it mean? I would have said, well, I think it means no means um, we're gauging kind of where the community is on it. And we've heard two no's and 27 yeses, but I could be wrong. Maybe we have historically. Um, I think Mode. It's just homeowners on those on those four roads, though. Right. No, I, I take a survey of the whole town. You're going to get a total different outcome. Well, I, but, I but think I think bef I think other years we just haven't mowed. Even if right. somebody's even so, if somebody was a no, we just haven't mowed. Right. We it, it was we we did treat it as a sort of taking a pulse. Right. Well, okay. how was the question presented to these people? Was it was it presented as these four roads don't mow these four roads, or was it don't mow in front of my house? That's a good question, Alfred. I presented it the same way I always have, which is the that I put up the signs at the end of the roads for no mow. Yeah. So so neither neither speci specifically not either way that Alfred framed it. So. Yeah. So what I'm a little worried about is, is the precedent of, oh, if I say no, then I get mine mode. Yeah, I got it. Um, and maybe, maybe we are able to walk the line right now and say, well, we've got two people willing to contribute to the study and we'll accept no and mow them because it helps us learn. But I, I think think that I would want that caveat, at least for now, because we don't want to have the whole, how many years that Peter's been doing this, and now he's going to do more by hand, you know, lost to, I mean, eventually, I think, we're, we're going to well, have and to I think, I think it sets up a precedent, too, that, you know, if somebody doesn't, what if somebody in another part of town says, well, I don't, I don't want mine mode either because of this, and then you got to keep track of who wants their side mode and who doesn't want it mode. It could be kind of a real challenge. <laughs> the, uh, at the last meeting, you uh, you requested Stephanie requested that you not mow a little over a mile of um, of her road. And how did you deal with the neighbors on that one? We didn't. Jack Hill Road. Yeah. No, I remember that. So I we, that was a we little over we a mile. We haven't had an issue mm -hmm. right. on Jack and that was before. that was that was particularly her her property also. Peter, you're right. asking to cover mm -hmm. four roads. She started with is, her property and went all the way to the dump road, which is an I don't know how many houses that is, but it's not just her property. It's over a mile. She doesn't have a mile of road. Okay, well, so that's I not think, the way I took it. I was okay. it was more just in front of her property is the way I understood what she I what I was the, not supposed to mow. When so I let me the I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna position, the position I stated was based on our repeatedly at least twice being told that Kent and Sterry didn't like the fact that their road frontage wasn't being mowed. It wasn't just because they said no, it was because they've repeatedly made clear to us like well, they want a mode. They've been consistent. Yes. 
Yeah. Yeah. So that that was my position. Not that they said, you know, we just don't want to participate in this. They've they've done it. They've watched it. They witnessed it, and you know. Mm -hmm. So I, well, I, I don't know. It, I'm okay either way, but I just wanted to also acknowledge that. However, yeah. we do that that we've heard from them. Maybe we send them a letter saying, "Well, we're doing a study. Please bear with us." But um, that's it. Okay. Denise, so, what specific question we have to decide tonight, or decide to not decide. We need to decide or not to decide to let Peter post his signs. Yeah. Yeah. We need to decide tonight. It's time. Yeah. Mower's going out. I yeah. hope tomorrow. I, uh, I dug up 122 plants in Kent Corner. I couldn't. Peter, Peter, I'm, I'm sorry. Peter, today. I don't mean to be. Peter, I don't need to mean to be rude, but we have a time. We have a time crunch, so I need the board to weigh in on a decision here. Sharon, I will make a motion that we authorize Peter to put up his signs. I second, second. that. Okay, wait a minute. So, and what about the two people that said no? Is that in your motion at all? Okay. I, I make a motion that we authorize Peter to put up his two signs and that we um, and that Alfred's crew mow the property of the two landowners who asked, who said no, um, noting that in part we are approving or we are taking that step because it's consistent with Peter's study of how to reduce the spread of turbul. Okay. Okay. It's Rick, 12 did you signs. Wanna, Rick did, yeah. So I'm going to say it's 12 signs, not two. Okay. I don't think I said two, but, but yeah, you, okay. yeah, you said two. So, okay. oh. yeah. Can I, Denise, can I just add something before you vote? Um, let me. See if there's a second first. Rick, do you have a second? Yeah, I'll second it. Okay, Alfred, what's your question? Uh, it's more of a comment. Um, going back to workman's comp, we have to. We had to do special arrangements for mowing uh, the lawn at the town office. How how is it? How is the town protect, protected? from liability if Peter's out there working in our right away. He's not being paid. He's not an employee. That's the difference. He's a volunteer. Yeah. It's like all okay. those people okay. who hope you're, I just pay. hope you're covered for that. Yeah, that's, that's, all. That's, how the, that's how the league explained it to us. The moment yeah. we start providing compensation for work rendered is when we get in trouble. Okay, select board, are you ready to vote? Rick? Yes, I. I'm an I. Sharon? I. Um, John. Yes. And Cliff stepped away for a minute, so we've got a we've got a majority. All right. Thank you, Peter. Thank you Thank so you, much Peter. for all your work on this project. We really appreciate Thank you. it. What was your uh, final uh, decision then on the two that didn't want it mowed? We're getting that the road mowed. that it, the road crew will mow it. Because okay. it's because it's consistent with your study. Okay, right. thank you. Yeah. That way it's not precedent setting. Yeah, that way it. Yeah. Okay, so okay. Um, North Callis Memorial Hall Association. Um, I see Rowan's here and Stephanie's here from Conservation Commission. I don't see anybody else that anybody can obviously ask a question, but um, thank you, Rowan, and all for your work. I see the building standing up on stilts it's pretty amazing it is amazing. um and i i did i read the everybody's been sent the agreement at least twice um i i did appreciate reading the conservation commission's minutes and they asked a lot of good questions which i see that you incorporated into the agreement um the management agreement um and i think i think i had a I think I had a question, but I just have to find it. Um, so anyways, um, would you like to speak, Rowan, and then Stephanie, about the agreement? Sure. Um, I'll, I'll keep this pretty brief. I think you guys are all fairly um, 
familiar with what's going on. Um, and I'm, I'm one of the seven board members of the North Calis Memorial Hall Association. And we're in the process of restoring the hall. If you haven't seen it, go take a look. It, the whole thing is up in the air. And um, for the first time in 130 years, and it's, um, it, it's crazy and impressive. And also it, it, it gives you a good chance to see just how terrifying the basement is. So it's a really good thing we're doing this now. The, um, the building could not have probably withstood too many more years of um, being ignored uh, before we would have been in real trouble. So it, yeah. it's all really good that this is happening. So um, work is underway and will be underway throughout the next few months uh, to, to restore it and get it, um, get it firmed up basically. And um, we have an agreement with Vermont Housing and Conservation Board who has provided grants and um, in, in exchange for that, they have conservation easements and historical preservation easements on the hall, which means that in perpetuity, uh, it will always be a, a building with uh, a public uh, service aspect to it. And that can never change. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're in, we're kind of in a, a great place where basically all the things that the hall has always been are now sort of codified and, and real and permanent. Um, yeah. Also, we're could still raising funds because, um, as I'm sure you all know, uh, uh, the uh, cost of doing any sort of building or restoration project in the COVID era has exploded. Where um, you know, like plywood is three to four times what it was a year and a half ago, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, we're still raising funds, but we definitely have enough for this this phase one that's underway, and phase two is looking pretty good. So. Good. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Um, fingers crossed. But yeah, it, it looks like if all goes well, we'll be able to open the building um, in 2022, next year at some point. Um, right. and part of the funds is uh, 50000 coming from the, the town conservation fund. And so we've been uh, working on that, working with the Conservation Commission on that. And you know, the, uh, the select board wanted a chance to be able to review the easement and the uh, management plan. And yes. so you guys have had that. And um, so I'm looking forward to any any input or thoughts that you have. I'd, I'd be at, excited to incorporate that into yeah. the. Into well, I, I sent you a question earlier today was just who signs this agreement. And you said it's you guys, VHCB, and I forget the other person you said. Oh. The, the agreement is just is for VHCB's benefit. So it's between us and them. Um, in terms, in terms of the official management plan, but the the idea of the management plan is it's basically a constantly evolving document. Um, it's basically like if all seven members of the 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 Memorial Hall board died in a plane crash together, we'd have something a booklet that could be handed over to you know the the yeah. next people to take it over. So um, that that's what the management plan should eventually be is like. How to, how to run the hall, so right. but that, that, that'll take a while. So, um, Stephanie, on behalf of the Conservation Commission, you all reviewed it. You did a really thorough job reviewing it, which we really appreciate, um, and asked some really good questions. Um, I thought it was well done. And I guess we would, the select board would be looking for this Conservation Commission's recommendation to release the first allotment of funds, which is $20,000. Stephanie, are you still there? I'm here. Um, yeah, I mean, we, as you saw from the minutes, you know, we had a detailed discussion uh, with Rowan um, about both the interim management plan and also the VHCB conservation easement. There were some ambiguous things in that. Um, I just wanted to mention too, that one of the main issues we had was that the, the original, I think the original proposal was to um, have a future parking area e expansion. And so when we talked with Rowan about it, um, Rowan, just correct me if I'm wrong, but I remember we talked to you about it and you said, yeah, yeah, we're gonna get rid of that. 
Um, Because it was of concern because it was just sort of, we remembered that there was a proposed parking. There was an area in the woods across from the hall that at one time was proposed for parking and there was a huge outcry. Um, Yes. Yeah. So anyway, that was taken out and a few other things, just clarifying that the shoreline would always be accessible for swimming to the public. Um, w- was an, an important clarification to just just to make sure. I think their intent was, but there were things, a few, just a few things in there with language that we felt needed to be clarified. And so they clarified it and it looked good to us. And so we recommend moving forward with the money. Okay, select board members, any questions of Stephanie or Rowan? Oh. I can't. I can't see everybody, so I can't tell. Um, Rick, Rick. No, Sharon. I don't have. Sharon, John. Uh, I don't. I don't have questions. I think it would be great to just have yeah. the motion, and then any questions that come out of the specific motion would be. Would. I want to, Cliff. Do you have any questions? He stepped away. I think Denise. Yeah. Well, he called the document up, so he's. No, that was me. Oh, that was you. Um, um, can I, can right, I ask so, one more question? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Ron. Um, so the, the way you guys set up the disbursement was uh, the first 20000 on commencement of phase one, which is already underway. And yep. then um, the, the, the second 20000 when phase one construction is 50% complete, yep. that'll, that'll actually probably be in like two weeks. So I don't know if you guys want to vote on both of those now or if you'd rather um, we came back if, for your next meeting. What is what does 50% complete mean if it's still standing in the air? <laughs> so phase one is the um, is all the foundational work. So it's the um, all the basement and the supports. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that will be that basically that will go that will be done some point in July. So we're basic we're pretty much and they've been working on it since early April. Right, but that's um, not a couple. That's not a couple weeks. July is a month away. July will be a hundred percent done with phase one. Um, oh, okay. I see what you mean. Yeah. So fifty percent will basically be depending on how you want to define it in the next mm-hmm. couple. So I, it's just a question whether you want to um, save save yourself having yeah. another meeting. Select board. What do you? What are your thoughts? I, I think that we uh, make the motion to include both disbursements, but the second one is is dispersed by the treasurer upon receipt of, I don't know, a letter documenting that they're at what fifty percent, Rowan. Yeah. Yeah, that's what our our letter says, fifty yeah. percent. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so I I would make that motion. I would second that. Okay, select board. Any further so, comments or questions? I would actually really love to hear from Katie exactly what the is it fifty percent of phase one? Let let can we hear the motion? Fifty percent of phase one is the second disbursement. Yes. Go ahead. So I, wrote, Katie. I wrote John Brabant made a motion to include. So there needs to be something added here. Made a motion to include both disbursements. The second amount dispersed by the town treasurer upon receipt of documentation that phase one is 50% complete. The first the first installment is issued immediately after the vote, well, by the treasurer. Right. And and the and and the motion should include what the the actual figure is for each disbursement. Right. The the letter that we sent out said that we would disperse twenty thousand dollars when the commencement of phase one construction activity with the commencement of phase one activities and 20,000 when phase one construction is 50% complete. So maybe that should be part of the motion with the motion stating that once the treasurer receives confirmation that the 50% construction is complete, that that the treasurer will disperse the additional $20,000. And that can be an email or something. It doesn't have to be. Right. Rowan's got a life too, I think. (laughs) <laughs> he chips uh, wood for a living, I think. Yeah. <laughs> so, and it's, and just to keep saying it, 50% of phase one is complete. Correct. That's the second Correct. installment. Yeah. Yeah. 
John, could you please repeat the part that you added last where you said the first install, the first installment in the amount of $20,000 is dispersed immediately like now. Okay. on the vote. And the second installment is dispersed by the treasurer, both are by the treasurer, by the way, um, upon receipt of documentation that yes. the project has reached the 50%. Phase. Can you state the second right. installment amount too? Yes. I'm sure you can write it better than I can say it, Katie. Yeah, I'm going to ask Denise to copy and paste the the contract information also, so that there, so that that's added in there, right? Yep. Yeah, yep. I'll do that, Katie. All right. Anything else? Is the board ready to vote? All right, Rick. Do we have? Was I, there a second? <laughs> yeah, I yeah, thought I Rick seconded. Sec it. I thought Rick seconded okay. it. I. I. Okay, Sharon. Aye. John? Yes. And I'm an I, and I don't think Cliff is back yet. So we've, we've got four. So that's good. Back. Thank you, North Thank Calus you, Rowan. Memorial Hall. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, everyone. Um, and uh, so, I, so, what, so what will happen is the treasurer will, I'll alert the treasurer to, um, read the minutes. Katie's usually really good about getting them out like within the next day or so. So she knows, so the treasurer knows what to do. Okay. Um great. And we'll um we'll we'll let you guys know when um we hit that 50% uh mark. But as I, I mentioned when I was talking with Stephanie and the Conservation Commission, this town money is ending up being just incredibly key to this project staying on track. So um could not be a better um example of the importance of the conservation fund. Yeah. So thank Great. you. Great. Thanks for the work. Thank you. It's very nice. exciting. Yeah. Excitement, excitement in North Callis. <laughs> it's gonna be a good party. <laughs> okay. Next up is Curtis Town Dam Exploratory Group. Um I see that it looks like there's Mark Mahali and um, Meg, are you here for Dan? March, Mark Sweeney and Colleen Bloomer. Yeah, I was kind of um, going through the screen and seeing who was here. So it looks like Marge and Colleen and Mark, I didn't hear from Meg whether she was. I am, but I haven't done any work. I'm just curious. Okay. All right, so um, the damn dam. The damn dam. Go Can you ahead. guys hear me? Take it away, dam group. Okay, this is Mark Mahali. Can you guys hear me okay? Yep. Great, yeah, Mark. Hi, everyone. Thanks for taking time for this. Uh, so the Curtis Pond Dam Exploratory Group formed in July of last year, and we, we gave you a first kind of quick overview in February. Um, since the, and uh, Colleen Bloom is our convener and she's attending along with Marge Sweeney, who's our finance, brilliant finance expert, um, and has done with really great help. I mean, not that he's a supporter or anything, but he's been very helpful. John McCullough has helped us with our projections. Um, we kind of overlap with the Curtis Pond Association, which is a voluntary association, but we're not the same thing. We're owners of land on the pond and near the pond uh, within walking distance um, who are really concerned about the dam and the future of the pond. Um, we've, we've spent these months, almost 11 months now, investigating title issues, insurance, finance runs. We've, we've talked to the general counsel and met with the general counsel of the Agency of Natural Resources and the dam safety people and lakes and streams people, et cetera. And um, can you, Denise, could I ask you to put up the PowerPoint that we this provided? It's just a very few. Yeah, that, that you can start there. Um, we really, I'll just summarize quickly uh, before we get into it. Um, the dam is fragile. It could go anytime, it could be overtapped. Uh, if it does, the lake will disappear. Doing nothing is going to would cost the town more in lost taxes 
than it would cost to fix the dam. And uh, we're going to ask if you might consider going forward to join us um, in some way, either through appointment of a joint committee or appointing a liaison, so that as we move forward and talk to various state officials and start looking at this more carefully, the town is involved. And also as we educate the citizenry of the town through meetings, it's, it's some sort of a joint effort. But in some, we're really ready to do the work and help you in any way we can. Uh, could you look at, yeah, the, the first one there, Denise, this one, yeah. Um, so the dam, it's old, it's uh, over a hundred years old. It was rated poor by the state. Um, climate change increases the risk because uh, the, what would really destroy the dam, as you can see in the picture, I don't know, Denise, can you make it full screen or is that it? Um, let me see. I don't know. Yeah, that's good. Is that better? Yeah, it leaks like crazy. But in addition, the big risk is if we had another Irene, the dam would be overtopped and probably disappear. And if that happens, we really don't know if the state would allow us to rebuild. And that's not just caution. Uh, there are ANR, the Agency of Natural Resources, divided on that issue. There are the wetland people would rather see if, if it's returned to its natural state. I, I just think it'd be very difficult. Uh, we wouldn't necessarily at all be allowed to rebuild. And without the dam, there's no pond, so we'd lose the town beach and the island and the state access. I think uh, people from out of state would stop coming there and uh, the community store would die uh, from lack of business. Um, so can we go to slide two, the next slide here? This is really interesting and I'm gonna let Marge take this over. Marge has done an enormous amount of work uh, looking at the grand list, working with John McCullough, and uh, basically there's $3 million minimum. I think that's a very low number. It's probably double that, that the town would lose in assessed value if the dam went. Marge, are you, are you yeah, able to you, make this up? Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so, so just a quick overview of what you're seeing, and then I'll tell you, give you a, a, a quick idea of how I came to these numbers. Um, so the bar, it's a bar graph with what we've got are seven different scenarios of funding options. And um, the, there, there's a bar for each, like for town-wide, what do we cost for town-wide? That's the green. The, <coughs> the blue is the shoreline and the uh, yellow is people within walking distance. And what I, um, and so uh, if, this is all based on how much the property taxes would increase per $100,000 of real value. And we, uh, I did this, this particular bar graph using uh, a 500, half a million um, town bond, a 3% annual payment, which would end up with costing $33,300 per year. Now, so um, the first one is a little different because what that shows is if the dam breaks or is removed, uh, we're estimating a loss of over 3 million from the grand list, which accounts to everyone in the town who um, would pay $42 more in taxes to cover that loss of income per 100,000 real value. So whatever, you know, if you're 200, then it would be $84 a year that your taxes would increase. And we projected out that over the next 20 years, if the town broke and we lost that grand list value, that the town would lose 2.3 million in tax revenue. Now, um, for each one of the scenarios I show you, I show which, how much um, each group would, their taxes would increase. So um, on the, the last um, set of bars, if the town paid 80% of the cost and the walkers, people within walking distance paid 5% and the shoreline 15%, the town wide would be $13 per 100,000. The shoreline people would be $53 per 100,000. And the 
excuse me, the walking folks would pay 33, <coughs> excuse me, $33 per 100,000. Now, where did I come up with these numbers? Um, what I, the most, everything pretty much is based on the town's grand list, which I use the online uh, web page to, to gather the numbers. Um, I then, um, using um, for the projections, I, I had 30 years worth of what the property um, taxes, the rates were for the last 30 years. I had my own um, copies of my bills from the last 30 years. And I used the, the, the last 30 years to project out what the next 20 years would cost um, using um, a formula, a net present value formula. And um, I use, I picked, um, and I have all the supporting documents. I didn't, uh, there, we have, there's uh, spreadsheets for the uh, current tax rates for those on the shoreline, those on the walking distance and the town overall. And I have all, all the supporting documents for these numbers out on, we have the Curtis Pond Association has a website and out there's an exploratory web page, and I have all the spreadsheets that I use to calculate all this. And I can, if anybody has questions, I'm not going to go into it um, today. But if any, we can, I can spend a a lot of time with someone if they want to see how I came up with the numbers. But after getting all these numbers, I sat down with um, John McCulloch and asked him if he, I wanted him to kind of verify my methodology and the uh, reasonableness of what I had done. And um, he sat down and was very helpful with that. Um, I also, um, um, oh, I lost my train of thought here. Um, I did, we, I picked five, we picked 500,000 as a starting number, as to put on these screens. Um, but we have, I have worked out um, 31, I've got a, another paper that has 31 different funding scenarios. These are just a sample. We have 31. Now that I have the mes methodology, I can pick, do any kind of scenario any, you know, that people would like, um, like to see. Yeah. Well, and the thing is, is that uh, we, we are not trying at this point to recommend a, a, um, any of these scenarios. They're just samples. And because it's a town decision on whether to go forward or not to go forward and which one we will choose. So um, do you want me are to- you ready, Are you, ready for, the, are you yeah, ready for the next sure. slide? Yeah, I know we yeah. got to move along here, but I just want to add that I want to emphasize Marge has done many runs. We've looked at them. This is just the sort of beginning the process for you. I do think just, I'm gonna add my personal opinion. I think that losing $3 million in, in assessed value is highly conservative. It assumes that we only lose 25% of the property value of the shoreline out properties and no loss in value of those adjacent to the shoreline. And I just think that's very low. It's probably in my view, well in excess of $5 million lost. <laughs> and to make up the lost assessed value would, I think, be well more than $42 per 100,000. But this really is a good time to fix the dam because interest rates are low. And the we've heard nothing but support from the key state agencies. And we're just worried, frankly. All it's going to take is a really big storm uh, to do this. We really can't get this done. At a certain point, I mean, we really want to help the town. We'll participate. We'll do the bulk of the work. We'll do anything we can to help you. We're, we are willing to fundraise and raise a minimum of $100,000 in grants or donations towards the dam's repair. And as Marge said, we're not wedded to any particular formula at this point. But it's clear that we, we really feel that when we're talking to state officials, et cetera, right now, it would be really great 
if the select board could appoint someone who would be there with us so that everybody's hearing the same thing. So that we're not just some group of citizens out there on our completely on our own. And during the summer, you know, the select the association has held informational sessions in the past and had really good attendance in the summer. And so we were thinking this summer we would, it would really be good to begin an education program, not just for the landowners around the pond, but also for the citizenry, you know, for people in general in the town and to advertise those sessions and have them in a convenient place and have them sponsored just as information sessions to talk, have them sponsored by the town and by us. And so we really think it's time to sort of begin to work together. And we don't have any particular idea as to how to work together, whether you want to form a joint committee or whether you want to appoint a liaison to our committee, however you want to do it is fine with us. Okay, but we so think uh, now's the time and, and, and uh, stand ready to answer any questions and would ask that you join with us in further exploration of this issue. So let me ask the select board, um, I'll go in order on the screen. Oh, John's got his hand up, yep. I, I just want to clarify and kind of looking down that the list of next steps and what needs to be done for this to move forward. Um, and Mark and I have spoken about this on the phone and, and I think I brought it up during one of our last meetings that the town is and was willing uh, to take ownership of the dam. Uh, we just needed to figure out how to finance this. And the idea would be the bond and how that the responsibility for payment would be allocated, which was that, that was a great presentation. Thank you. Um, but in terms of the timing of the ownership, that cannot happen according to Passive when we had a last conversation until the new dam was built. And we had already had a conversation with the current owner of the dam about how we would structure, you know, that handoff and that that current owner would allow us to do the necessary construction and pre-construction work. The, the engineer design is all done. We got the 100% plans submitted by Dubois and King. They've been approved by the state. I mean, if their money was there, they could start right now, we could start putting an RFP out for engineering services. Um, it's We're right down to the bonding thing. And But in terms of the ownership, that would not happen until the new dam is in place, final as built plans are engineer stamped as meeting standards. And then we could take ownership and passive would, uh, that's the VLCT insurance arm, would then cover us. But until in such times a new dam is, is constructed, that does not have all the risks that Mark just explained to us, um, we, we could not take ownership. But that's not, that's not a, a, a hurdle we can't overcome. Thank you, John. I, I agree with my, okay. most of what you said. The only thing I'd say it's, is that part of what we all have to do is update all of this. I mean, this is 15 years old and uh, we got to make sure that you know, there's new people. A lot of the new people are really supportive actually, but uh, I think John's got the general idea. Okay. Um, Sharon, Rick, Cliff, questions? Uh, I have a couple of questions. So. I, I appreciate all of the work that you guys have done and and the the documents were were, were really really clear um, I one of the questions that occurred to me as as you were not earlier but when you were going through the slides is um, just confirm that how you envision the the cost being, born across town in some formulaic fashion, regardless of which model, you know, one of those or something else is through property taxes. Plus, um, plus Mark, you just mentioned some fundraising um, by the, in the, in the, by the private group, I assume. Correct, Sharon. Um, three sources. Four, fundraising locally. We think we could raise funds, grants, and by the or ear, and I would add to that something new earmarks. I mean, we do have just about the most important man in the Senate, uh, 
with us right now, and that's not something to disregard. But assuming that's not a major source, then the rest would be done by an assessment district. And we've identified three sources, which would be townwide. Um, it, you know, it could be sort of concentric rings, the property owners, those within a thousand feet. And, then, and, and by the way, a number of our most active members are in that second group. And then the third would be the town as a whole. I, I really I appreciate that that approach and that recognition that there's you know tiers of impact. Um, I think uh, just to skip ahead, knowing that Denise is going to wrap us up really quickly, mm -hmm. I would I am not in favor right now of a shared committee because I think that kind of jumps ahead of where we are as representatives of the town. Um, I I certainly would support one of us. Um, maybe John is the right one to join your group as a liaison from the select board so that there's, a, you know, select board voice town perspective um, and certainly liaison bringing things back to us. That's where I come down right now. Something else to consider <clears throat> when you're looking at funding, you know, there's going to be this ARPA money. And there's going to be this long list of things that our money can be used for. So I'll just throw that out there as maybe something that the town could look at. From our we, we would certainly look into that for you if you would like. Um, Rick, do you have any comments or questions? Yeah, I would. I am going to get things wrapped up here. Yeah, I'll make it quick. I, I, I think I spoke in favor of the dam many, many years ago in the first round of town meeting, just as a citizen. But I mean, like Sharon, I too have concern. You know, I think that, I mean, I'd be nice to really see <clears throat> you know, how, you know, the, the kind of a diminishing role of impact on taxes for people as they move away from it. I mean, this is an important town resource. I have no I don't argue that at all. It's like number 10 pond and it's part of what Talos is. And I think it's, it would be nice to see this move forward and you know, we support this, but doing it in a way that's also fair, I wanna make sure that happens as well. And you are right in this day and age, I'd be very, I'm very concerned with the climate change, the amount of rainfall, these big, large rainfall events we're getting, the unpredictability. And it's, you know, it's not just the idea that we lose those ponds. But there's a lot of huge public safety issue mm -hmm. downstream on this thing, you know, the potential damage caused. But, you know, I want to be very, very careful, as John said, as, you know, as we, we're elected by the town to protect the interests of the town, too, and the liability and everything else on this. So, we've got to be whatever path forward we choose, we've got to be very careful that this is consistent with the, uh, you know, with what our insurers will agree to and so on. Yeah. Is that it, Rick? Yeah, I'm good. Okay, Cliff? Yeah, I just wanted to uh, thank everyone for the dedication and putting together these excellent presentations. It convinces me that we have some concerned citizenry here that are in a position to help us make this happen. I, I echo Rick's sentiments uh, and support the project. And I think we have the right group of people to help us get there. So thank you. So John, John and I, John and I served on the <clears throat> committee back in what was it, John, two thousand and four or something. So we do have some historical knowledge. Um, so it might make sense. Um, I know John's really busy in the summertime with paying and all those things. So we could maybe share the role of liaison. If that works for everybody, that would work for me. Yeah, yep. that would be great. I, that would be great. Okay. All right. So, um, so that's Denise, that's yeah. So that's great. Thank you. And I wanted to say what I said before, Denise. Um, I am happy to delegate on behalf of the board the participation in this group, and trust you to bring us in when we need to, and in the meantime, spare us. Um, I don't spare I, us all the spare you all the emails. Yeah, I can't I can't I can't process all that email coming back at, at me and all the conversation and I really rely yeah. on you to just, you know, 
crystallize it and digest it for us. So thank you. Okay, we can, and John, <laughs> we can do that. All right, does that work for the dam group? Perfectly. <laughs> the dam dam. All thank right. Thank you everybody for that. Thank That's you some, so much for all your work on this. You've done thank really you for job. your time guys and for your consideration and Sharon, we will not darken your door until we have something very concrete. <laughs> okay. Many others, many others will. So, so not to worry. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll make sure we flutter with something else on email. Definitely. All right. Be, Thank you. you. Thank you money. so much. Thanks, we'll everybody. be in touch. Thank you. All right. Next up, um, here are appointments. We um, town meeting was back in March and we've been trying to make some appointments periodically as we can find room on the agenda but anybody who hadn't been reappointed you continue to serve until such time that you're reappointed or you resign so we've done our best to try to keep some getting some appointments going um so first up we have drb um i don't know if barbara's joining us tonight or not but we have Peg, I see is here. And oh, there's Dot Helly. Hi, Dot. Right. And Stephanie and Ann Winchester all need to be. Well, Dot Helling is a new member, so the others are just reappointments. Um and then we can we can do that and then maybe meet. Or we can meet Dot now. Hi Dot. Hi. How are you? Good. Welcome to Catalyst. Thank you. Yeah, so, great. So, a little, so tell us a little bit quickly, like in 60 seconds, your background. Did you, did you work with um, or have you worked with other quasi-judicial boards in that capacity at all? In, well, I'm a retired you're... attorney from Montpelier, and I was on a lot of boards and committees, did a lot of real estate. Um, um, yeah, I mean, it's been 15 years, 50 years of service to the community. Did you, so did you work with any other quasi, did you work in a quasi judicial capacity? And any no. of your other board work? Okay. No, no, no. I've been, it's all been through the courts. I was an acting judge and. Yeah, I saw um, that. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, we do have a requirement in the select board um, as a whole had made a decision that anybody that was serving and wanting that was serving needed to attend a specific training that we had by the town's attorney. And I think mm -hmm. I mentioned to you that before you can sit on any case, you would have to, and this is just honor system, that you have attended the training and I can send you the training video. Um, so, and I think we just need confirmation from Barbara that she, I know she, I sent her the link several times last summer and I think she was taking the training, but we just need to confirm <clears throat> that she's completed that as well. There's a couple other documents that we can share um, about DRBs and so forth. Um, other select board members have questions for DOT or any of the um, slate up for reappointment? Oh. <clears throat> Dot, your re reputation speaks for itself in my case. <laughs> well, thanks. I did get Barbara's promise that she would be my mentor. Okay. Before I did this. Yeah. So Sharon, John, oh. Cliff, any questions, comments? Oh, thank, thank you, Dot, for being willing to serve. That's really Yeah, it's great. Oh, well, thanks, John. We thanks really to all for being willing to serve. Much yeah. appreciated. And to reserving. <laughs> and fun and Go ahead, yeah, I I agree. I agree. I do. I do want to note that I suggested that because Denise participates as an alternate on the DRB, that she consider her recusing herself. And I feel it's important as a member of the board to be public about that. It is of course her right to decide whether she does or doesn't. But I want to say, for my part, where I'm coming from. But I'm pleased and delighted that you step forward, and that I guess. Barbara's, I don't see Barbara here, but that she's re-upping re, um, re or offering to re-up and peg as well. Thank you all. So please. would somebody like to make a motion to reappoint um, Peg, Barbara, Stephanie, and Anne 
and to appoint Dot as a new member. And I'm just going to say for the record, I'm not going to vote. I'm going to abstain from voting. I will make that motion if, if that's or so moved. If you can, yeah, wordsmith that exactly right. And I think I think Katie can probably. Katie, do you have a motion in mind for the minutes that you'd like to read? Yes. Um, did someone make the motion? Should I put someone's I name did. in yet? I oh, did. So, okay, so Rick Keene made a motion and somebody seconded, seconded to reappoint the following members to the Development Review Board for terms of three years. Peg Bowen, term expiring 2024. Barbara Whedon, term expiring 2024. Stephanie Kaplan, term expiring 2024 and Ann Winchester as alternate member, term expiring 2024. Also, I, I had it as a separate motion, but I can incorporate it, incorporate it to appoint Dot Helling as a member to the Development Review Board to fill the remainder of the vacant position expiring in 2022. The motion was voted and passed unanimously. Okay, so we need a, who, who seconded Rick's motion? I'll second. Okay. Um, Select board members, are you ready to vote, Rick? Aye. And let the record reflect that I'm abstaining from voting. Sharon? Aye. John? Yes. And Cliff? Aye. And thank you again, everyone, for thank you. your continued commitment and uh, to your new commitment to serving the town. We really appreciate it. Well, thanks. Nice thank meeting you. all of you who I yeah. didn't know before. <laughs> OK. Uh, Good yes, night. I Thanks, Good night. everyone. Um, <clears throat> next up is um, John McCullough um, would like to be back as a member of the DAB, Design Advisory Board. I think everybody knows John, so I'm sure that's why you show up. Alfred, Alfred, are you still, are you still here? Yes. Is there something more that you want? Or are you just listening in uh, on your own time? <clears throat> I was gonna. I was wondering about the reopening town buildings. Oh, uh, we're not gonna make any decision, a, a real decision tonight. I'm just kind of getting it on everybody's radar. So there's no decision okay. that's gonna happen tonight. I, you can okay. Well, if I don't need to, to be, listen, though. okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, so. if I, I just, if you wanted my comments on that, then I would be. I was. That's what I was waiting for. But uh, if you don't, I would. Yeah, I'll well, we'll I think uh, we'll probably have it on the agenda again on the 14th. Okay. 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 Thank you. Very good. Have a good, have a good night. Thanks, Alfred. Bye. Good Thank night, you. everybody. Thanks, Alfred. Bye, Alfred. Bye. Bye, Bye now. Um, anyways, is there a motion to appoint John McCullough as a member of the DAB? What's the term? Mm -hmm. um, what's the term? He would fill the vacant position expiring in 2023. Who vacated? Well, it was his, I think it was his position that was vacant. Oh, okay, yeah, I thought he was, yeah, right. Okay. Right, yeah. I'll, I'll make that motion. Yeah. I'll second it. Second it. Oh, okay, you ready to vote? <clears throat> Rick? Aye. I'm an aye. Sharon? Aye. John? Yes. And Cliff. Bye. <clears throat> okay, next up, Planning Commission. This would be to reappoint uh, Melanie Keene and Gary Root. I will and make I that my, Well, actually, it's a conflict of interest for me, isn't it? My um, wife. Yeah, I don't know that it's a conflict of interest. I think it's yes. a conflict of interest. <laughs> you're not serving on this. You're not serving on the same the same capacity, but I can make the motion if that works better that to be reappoint good. Melanie Keene and Gary Root as members of the Planning Commission. I'll second, a second? I'll second it. Okay. Um, Rick, are you voting or are you doing like I did in abstain? I, I will abstain just uh, out of... Uh, yeah, okay, I, thank you. I'm an aye. Sharon? Aye. Ron? Yes. And Cliff? I'm an I. Can we state the term for the record? Yeah. yeah. Katie, do you have the term? Yes. Melanie Keene, term beginning in 2020 and expiring in 2024, and Gary Root, term expiring in 2025. They're four-year terms. Thank you. Yeah. 
Okay, so we I would add that as part of my motion. All right, next up, swim committee. Yeehaw, there's going to be swim swimming this year. Hey, Daniel, you're on mute. Oh, I see. Sorry about that. And uh, you found, yeah, found with, a, with a little luck. Yeah. We're having a little bit of difficulty getting um, interested instructors who, who are also in a position to get certified. So I place our odds at about even at the moment that we'll still be able to move forward. Okay, but in the meantime, we can appoint the committee. Um, and these are one great. year, yeah, these are one year terms. Um, does somebody else want to make the motion or do you want, or I can do it? I'll make the motion. Okay. So would you like to make the motion to include the names that are on the agenda? Yeah, do you have those handy, Katie? Yes, it's Daniel Keeney, Pam Kentish, and Jess, well, to reappoint Daniel Keeney and then to appoint Pam Kentish and Jess Rich to the swim committee for a term of one year, all terms expiring 2022. So that's my motion. Okay. I will I'll second. second. Okay. Any further questions or comments? All right. Thank Rick? you. Rick? Aye. I'm an aye. Sharon? Aye. John? Yes. And I'm, and Cliff? Hi. Okay. There we go. You're good to go. Good luck getting the instructor and getting one that's certified. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank I you. Think, oh, Barbara's on too. I just wanted to um, put this on the agenda so that it's on our horizon of coming up with a plan to start looking at reopening of um, the town owned buildings we have. We've had one request for a wedding in August, another request for as soon as possible to have um, some kind of a music performance. It is, his name is, help me Barbara, it's Otto somebody, I can't remember his last name. Barbara, are you there? Barbara? Yep, sorry about that. Otto Mahler. And what is it? He's, I forget what it is. He's some kind of um, a it, grant. It, 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 he composed a piece of music that reflects the history of Callis. And he was wanting to do it at the Kent Museum because I think some of the recording or it has something to do with the old Robinson Sawmill. But the Kent Museum is under construction. So he's looking to do a concert to premiere his original composition that reflects the history of Callis. Sounds pretty cool. Yeah, sounds very yeah, cool. Yeah. So, you know, so we've got things coming up. Um, I know a, a different various boards and commissions are anxious to start using the downstairs for meetings. So we need to come up with a plan of when we when we plan to reopen for the public use of the building and for boards and commissions. So I don't I didn't expect that we would make a decision tonight, but we need to probably if we could possibly make a decision on the 14th, um, that would be great. What are you What are your thoughts, board members? Rick? Oh, I just would uh, would we tie it to. Um, I mean, we're we're definitely getting to the point where they're pretty soon we'll be opening things up generally. So do do we tie it to the governor's? Yeah, we would know, have to follow. Yeah, we would. We've been right yeah. along. We've been following the governor's executive orders <coughs> and following CDC guidelines. Mm -hmm. So I think I think we're almost I'm there with what the governor's expecting. The vaccinations and CDC has already said. You know, if you're vaccinated, you don't have to have a mask. Um, mm -hmm. But I think as a town, we need to, de to decide, oh, Barbara's better. Stand up. But so anyways, I wanted to get input from board members. I see Cliff had her his hand up. Yeah. Um, so um, I was not at the meeting, but I know at the last meeting, um, the select board approved having a special meeting with the um, 
friends of the Callis Town Hall. At that meeting, um, the friends were planning on presenting three documents. Um, one would be the, the usage revised usage policy for the town hall. The second would be the revised management agreement. And the third, uh, which wouldn't necessarily require the select board's approval, but just for the select board's information, the rental agreement that the um, manage the friends of town hall would be using um, with anyone who wanted to rent the hall, uh, making sure that uh, there weren't any concerns or areas that weren't covered in the rental agreement, allowing the select board to weigh in accordingly. Uh, for reopening the hall, I think the most important. Uh oh, Cliff disappeared. Uh oh. Uh oh. I don't even know. Barbara, do you know what he was going to say? I do not know what he was going to say. Oh dear. Um, and, but you wanted to say something, so why don't you go ahead while Cliff's signing oh, back. Okay, all right. So also, I um, would like to just have the select board thinking about what we're going to do um, in celebration of several different things, and this is related to the town hall. One, and I understand we're following the governor's guidelines and uh, the health officer's recommendations and so forth, but one, we have several things to celebrate. One is... Judy Roberts retirement, as well as um, a, the higher the election of a new town clerk, as well as um, two recent select board uh, departures, Rose and Cliff. Um, mm. and, and then just the end of kind of the end of COVID, the beginning of our new reality. And so we were, I was wondering if we could maybe have a one, a bit like a, a town-wide celebration at the town hall that would not represent the, a grand reopening of the town hall. The friends would do that at a later date, but it could be kind of the summer end of COVID Judy, Robert, Cliff, Rose, the new town clerk, a lot of things together. Yeah. Okay. So we, we, Barbara was just telling us about an idea she had been when you were signing back in, Cliff. Yeah. Sorry about that. My computer crashed. Oh, dear. Um, anyway, what I wanted to say is that uh, it, it, something we need to keep in mind is reopening the town hall. We should definitely have a uh, our policy for usage of the town hall in place. Mm -hmm. uh, right. Given that we <laughs> may need to alter the time frame of how these documents are going to be presented and discussed by the um, select board, it's conceivable that what we want to do is review the um, proposed revised usage policy, get the select board approval on that, and then. Um, that will segue as planned into the uh, appointed date for the discussion with the friends of town hall. And are you saying that those that document should be in place before we reopen it? I'm not sure I'm following. It's my opinion that it should be in place before we reopen the hall. Right, because we it have is to a have... document that would be owned by the select board and controlled by the select board, and it really sets the guidelines for what can happen at the hall and what the expectations are for anyone using the hall, regardless of whether, in, whether they're renting it or a member of one of the town commissions. Um, mm -hmm. it, it dots the I's and crosses the T's and protects yeah. our investment that we made in rebuilding the town hall. I agree yeah, with and that. We, um, yeah, I, I see what you're saying because we need somebody. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be, I don't want to have to schedule weddings and concerts so well, we, need, so that's, we need, the, that's a separate the, issue the management agreement and the rental stuff that is what we work out in the management agreement with the right. friends of but the usage policy is a town policy that is set right. by the select board and it controls everything else that happens there has to fall in line with the policy that mm -hmm. um i will be presenting to the select board okay i see what you're saying and we also need to check in when we have further discussions. I want to get the town health officer 
at least to be part of the discussion and so forth. Sharon? I was just pulling it open. I, I don't remember what's in it, but we do have guidelines for use of the town hall. And I don't know they're sparse, but we did them in 2017, whether yeah. they, whether they serve adequately in an interim window. No, 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 no. no. There are requirements that were, were made um, as a result of the revised use permit that was granted. And uh, we have to acknowledge those. And um, yeah, it's what, that what document that you're looking at, Sharon, was based upon a very different town hall. No, yeah, I, I, that was that was the old one. No, no, no. I'm 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 Cliff. 150 percent will defer to your judgment on that. But it makes me think then that we should actually rescind this document and get it off our website. It should have, if it's the correct document on the website, it should say that the town hall is closed right now. No, I'm looking for guidelines for use of the Callis Town Hall from June 2017. Right, and if the correct, if the correct version of that document, it should say that the hall is closed. If you're looking on the website, Sharon. It's... Um, if she is looking on the website. What I'm understanding is the document that's on the website is not the correct document. Sounds what it sounds like. That's then, then we, then we, <laughs> yeah, it needs to, that's the second incorrect document I found on our list today. Yeah, I'll, yeah, well, I'll, I'll coordinate that with uh, Judy. Okay. Yeah. So do I we, mean, they're, they're working on trying to get the, the website cleaned yeah. up. So yeah, Katie. but but if this is such an issue right now, right, with all these requests, then do we have to formally rescind and can we do that without that being an agenda item? It was already formally rescinded. It's just we've got the incorrect document on the website. Okay. All right. So really tonight was all about getting everybody thinking about reopening the hall. So Cliff, we at your request, we agreed to meet with the friends on the 21st. Mm -hmm. um, it sounds like maybe the policy piece of it that's owned by the select board, we could maybe look at on the 14th. The plan was, was to present the documents on the 14th to the select board, let the select board have a week to live with them yep. and then have the meeting yep. with the friends group. I the think 21st. the only thing that changes now is we get the uh, usage po revised yeah. usage policy in front of the select board a little sooner so yep. that we can pr approve that document at the meeting on the 14th. Yeah, that would make sense to me, timing yeah, wise. I, yeah. <clears throat> that makes sense. And, and just reminder, guys, I'm away on the 14th. Oh, that's right. Okay. All right. So, Cliff. Darren. Yep. Oh, excuse me, Denise. Sharon, when, how soon do you leave before the 14th? Because maybe, you know, if we get, if I get the document to the select board in advance of the 14th, you would at least have a chance to review it and weigh in with anything you might want to have to say. Yeah. Uh, that would be good. Yep. No, I'm happy to. Um, Anya graduates on the 7th. And after that, I'm out of pocket for about... 10 days okay so starting like from okay. the six, six on okay so we need to get the usage policy in front of you the first week of next month yeah first week of june okay i think that's doable all right, thank you, Cliff. Thank you, Barbara. I don't know if Barbara, oh, Barbara, you're still here. Okay. Thank you guys for being the friends of the town hall. Yeah. We are All right, any, We're friendly any, people. Huh? We're friendly people. Well, of course you are. Everybody in Callis is friendly, aren't they? Yes. For the most part, that's what I thought. All right. Thank so, you. um, any other quick update or would the board like to go back into executive session for about 20 minutes, I hope? 
So move. And this is to discuss for, and this is to discuss personnel matters. Second. Okay. Um, vote, Rick. Aye. I'm an aye. Sharon. Aye. Um, John. Yes. And Cliff. Aye. Okay. Thank you, Katie. Good night, everybody. Good night. Have a good night, Katie. Thanks, Orca. Are you? Did you shut You're Orca off? On it. Working on it. <sighs>